Somehow this got turned around. Well, that would have been bad. Okay, let's double check that to make sure that that's not turned wrong. around. Okay. Okay, let's double check. Cool, so that's working. Uh, thanks, Vive. Apparently updating you caused all that to go wrong. Well, anyway, now let's go ahead and get Twitter out, get our bot in here, and get our Discord taken care of. So, <clears throat> hello everyone, this is Chris Ingerson, and it is January 15th, and this is the January 15th Text Quest dev stream, on which we will be focusing on audio and coding. So today we're going to be focusing on finishing up our, uh, our audio implementation for the core menus. Um, there are some things that I have... Um, I'm not going to say experimented with, but researched. Um, and basically that research in, included uh, playing a bunch of PC games to kind of get a feel for how menus are handled. Um, and one, probably the best PC options menu I think I've ever seen, is uh, Dishonored 2's option menu. It is very good. Um, so I'm actually taking a lot of inspiration from that. Uh, and one of the... Uh, one of the things that I learned from that, well, there are a couple of things. Um, one, I actually know how to properly implement VSync now. <laughs> um, but two, uh, there are... Uh, how, do, how do I want to phrase this? Um, well, you know what, let's, instead of me explaining it, let's go ahead and jump in um, to show you where we currently are and uh, what our what our goal is going to be for today. Um, so we already have uh, audio implemented for our base menus. Uh, we don't have anything super elegant, and the sound effects are still a little placeholder for now, um, but they are functional. Uh, hello, Garrett. Welcome back. How are you doing tonight? So, one, I should probably maximize this. Um, when I click through here, let's go ahead and say start. Uh, and if I want to, let's go to options. See, we're getting some amount of clicking. Uh, let's go to uh, display. Um, so one, I probably should make all of my button interactions be this, uh, or have these kind of like arrows to the sides of them. Um, so the way it's currently set up for these types of things, you'll notice that you can just like click on the button itself and that cycles through. Um, but if you want to go back, you have to like click all the, all the way around. Um, and I personally don't think that that's too bad of a thing because there are only a few options here. Um, but there also are some things that I need to change. Uh, for one, if I have VSync on, then I shouldn't actually be allowed to adjust the frame rate because VSyncing forces the game to refresh at the monitor's refresh rate, which means that if you have VSync on and the frame rate locked, they're going to fight with each other. Um, so what I need to do is I need to disable VSync. All right, I need to disable the frame rate option if VSync is enabled. Um, and I also need to add a half VSync option, uh, which will basically be the same as VSync except every other frame instead of every frame. Uh, and that halves the frame rate, but it gives you a more stable frame. So there are a couple of things that I need to make, or tweaks that I need to make there. Uh, but on the whole, it's nothing too terrible. Uh, we do have, as you can hear, our buttons uh, making different sounds depending on if the option is enabled or disabled. So uh, when I click on it when it's off, switching it on plays that sound, switching it off plays this sound. Just a nice little audio cue to let, to let you know what's happening there. Um, and the other thing that I did experiment with, well not experiment, I researched, um, is things like uh, sliders do have sounds that play every time they are moved, uh, and they are just small subtle sounds that aren't going to be super annoying. So that's what, I, uh, that's what I'm going to be looking at. Um, see, fixing bugs and things I thought were fixed long ago. Round and round we go. Well, you know how it is. Uh, once you're done fixing one bug, two more have cropped up, and it's time to fix those. <laughs> um, so this is kind of where we are right now. I, I might have to actually end up redesigning these a little bit. Um, so, for example, I'm not sure if I want to keep the box aesthetic, like this tick, the tick box here. 
or if I want to make it um, say on or off. Um, I'm actually kind of partial to keeping them as the tick boxes because I think they look nice um, and I think it's fairly obvious which ones are off and which ones are on. Um, but you know there are some considerations to make there. Uh, as far as I don't really have anything else major that I need to do. Oh, uh, descriptions are actually something that I'm concerned about. So you can see that whenever we hover over these buttons, you get little descriptions um, as to what they do. And that's because I personally think that it's important that uh, players understand what each option is. Uh, and if, you know, if you're not a, let's say you're not a seasoned game player, or at least PC game player, and you've never even seen an options menu before, what does mouse sensitivity sensitivity X mean? Um, you know, the description here, the sensitivity of your horizontal mouse movements is not exactly great. Um, that's probably an example of, uh, of a description that needs to be reworded a little bit. Um, but you'll notice that some of the larger descriptions are kind of butting up against the edge of how how um, how much space they have. So you can see here the description is really close to the cancel button, which I'm not a fan of. But um, so I might end up having to shrink that text a little bit, uh, just so that it can fit a little bit better and and just be a little bit more legible. Uh, but these are all minor decisions. Um, these are just things that I wanted to kind of like get off my chest after seeing a bunch of PC options menus. Um, uh, so it's, for the most part, that's not, th those things aren't really going to affect what we're doing tonight. Um, I just wanna, wanted to kind of discuss what um, I was observing as I went through a bunch of menus. Um, but I will say that one of the things that I do need to do um, as, a, as a quick aside, kind of, is uh, I need to change my quit options. So when I, I'll just go ahead and start a new game. Save the wrong thing. Oh, hold on. There we are. Uh, so when we start a new game, which is interesting because why am I not seeing a menu? Ooh, well, well, well. This is curious. Okay. That is interesting. Did we get a null reference or something? We got some FMOD stuff, but that's not too bad. Hmm. Okay, that's curious. I bet that had something to do with loading the uh, cabin menu, or the cabin in the background. Anyway, um, so obviously I don't have sounds on these yet. Um, but one of the things that I do need to do is I need to add an option for quit to desktop just because the current uh, process for quitting is you have to quit all the way back out. Oh man, that's super hard to see the statue over there. Um, you have to quit all the way back out to this, and this is as early as you can get out. You can say, nope, you could say quit here. You won't do anything in the editor, but in theory you could say quit. Um, and then obviously from here you can say quit. Uh, and that's just something that I noticed playing uh, Dishonored, which was actually the first game I think I played that had a quit to desktop option. At least the first one I can think of. I don't, that doesn't mean it's the first game to ever do it, but it's the first one that I personally played. Um, and that's just a nice thing that uh, I think PC games should have, because I, um, I think I've talked a little bit about this on air before, but I have a huge hatred for games that take forever for you to quit out of. Um, to the point where I've actually considered making a video sort of describing how certain games fail to do that, or fail to exit games properly. Um, so I'd like to just kind of avoid my own, like a stumbling block that I have pointed out in so many other games, and that's something that I need to do as well. Um, anyway, so the first thing that I want to do tonight is add sounds to our um, sliders, but that is actually going to be a little trickier than it sounds, because I don't want to just have it play every time the value is changed. And specifically what I mean by that is I need to be able to clamp the value that um, it can, that sliders can adjust by. Um, so if I show you a slider, you'll note that there is a whole numbers checkbox here. And what that does is uh, if you have this checked, if you don't have this checked, then it's a smooth sort of float adjustment. But if you do have it checked, uh, oh, I guess it doesn't do it for the inspector. Of course not. Um, if you do have it checked, then basically when you scrub it in-game, it will only move in whole number increments. 
Um, but for things like FOV, uh, or, well, actually, FOV is probably going to be whole numbers. Um, but for things like alpha, or not alpha, I'm sorry, uh, gamma correction, we need to move that slider a little smaller, probably in increments of like 0.1. Uh, actually, probably not even that, probably in increments of 0.01, um, which means that I need to limit this slider, um, or how much the slider can adjust by. Now, I have not actually looked at this in code yet, but I am going to go ahead and open up graphics options just to throw something in there real quick. So there are a couple of possibilities uh, if we're lucky. One is that there is an exposed variable inside a slider that lets me adjust that. It's not in the inspector, which means that it's probably not a thing. Uh, and if that's the case, then we're going to be coding our own little slider logic. UI latency drives me nuts too. Oh yeah, who doesn't love that frame that frame buffer needed for everything? <laughs> also, hello Anthony, welcome back. How you doing tonight? All right, so real quick, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come down here and I'm just going to type. Da -da 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 -da. No, let's see, shadow slider dot. Let's see if we have any value here. Um, there is no increment amount. I probably need to. Just kind of tab through this. Uh, let's see, constant force direction. Direction. Huh. Okay. Really? I've never... Huh. I wasn't aware that you could do that. I didn't realize that you could do sliders in different directions. I always thought that they were hard-coded to be left to right. Is that exposed in the UI for them? It is. I guess I just never switched it. Huh. All right. Well, that's just me being blind. That's cool. Uh, let's see. Fill rect. We don't need that. Da, 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 da. Texture. Handle rect. Hide flux. Hinge joint. Image. Interactable. Mm -hmm. So there are min values and max values, but that's not what I need. That's just uh, the values you can move between. Uh, mm -hmm. Value. Network view. Mode sprite state. That's interesting. I guess that's okay. Um, tag target graphic transform transition no value and whole numbers. Okay, so cool. We're going to be diving into custom slider code, which is going to be fun. Um, I guess I'm going to put this in common. So. Close these things. Let's go over to Sleepy Owl Soft. Let's go to Common. Let's go to View GUI Components. Create a folder for sliders. All right. Uh, so one of the things that I'm going to do is let's go over to here. Let's go over to here. I'm going to look up uh, Unity's UI Bitbucket because they have their code posted, or the source code for their UI posted on Bitbucket. Uh, if you're ever doing any sort of custom UI stuff, I definitely recommend checking this out. Um, it is, it is very, it's much easier to build on top of their, um, their UI if you can actually look at the source code, uh, because it's not always exactly clear what they're doing. And also because there is a fair amount of internal utilities that are just marked as internal because screw you. That's why, I guess. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and go to unityengine.ui, UI, core, and I'm going to look at slider here. There we are. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and open that up as a separate tab. All right. So this is the source code for Unity slider component. For the most part, we're probably not going to really need to change any core functionality, um, all we're probably going to have to do is handle um, however it's doing our whole numbers. So I'm going to just kind of see where this is going. So let's find this. Okay, so that means it's probably just like this. Yeah, okay. So let's see. Knock it around. Uh, da, 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 size of each step. Here we are. See, and this is where I get stupid mad. Um, right there. They have a variable called step size, but you can't freaking set it because why would you ever want to set it? Oh, Unity. 
<sighs> so that means that basically what we're going to do is we're going to like find this wherever this is used, um, and we'll just have to write our own override that replaces it, basically. So go figure. Wow, and it's not even really that... Ah, jeez. Frickin' ridiculous. So, yeah. Our slider is actually going to be pretty straightforward to code. We basically just have to change that. <laughs> okay, then. That makes it much easier. Um, let's go ahead and say create. And I'm going to say C sharp script. And we'll call this incremental slider. This is a terrible name because I'm terrible. Incremental slider. Eh, sure, why not? Uh, because this is a slider that's going to go forward in discrete increments. So we're going to go ahead and open this up. And then we're going to have to write a custom inspector for this. Um, that's where I make all variables public, unless I have a very good reason not to. I So it, it's interesting, because my I used to make most of my variables public by default. And then about a year or two ago, um, we switched over at work to using pri serialized private and protected variables. So my default behavior is essentially like if it's a one-off script, serialized private variables. If it's a script that will be derived from in any way, then basically everything's protected so that at least the derived scripts can can uh, talk to them and you know do some certain things. But um, public, I've pulled away from a little bit just because of trying to maintain code cleanliness. Like it's a weird aesthetic choice that I don't even know how to really describe it, but basically I started doing it when I got kind of self-conscious about my code being sloppy. <laughs> because it doesn't make sense to have a public variable that you can reference in code if nothing's ever really supposed to change it. Um, think like object references that you drag, th uh, that you assign in the inspector. It doesn't really make sense for those to be public and changeable in script unless you expect to change it in script. So it's like a weird philosophy discussion that we had at work. <laughs> um, I basically had it with a couple of the other programmers and at the end of it, I'm like, I think we should probably start doing this just because it, it cleans up our code a little bit. And it also helps with uh, when you're working with uh, less experienced programmers because you can kind of lock things down that are uh, that don't need to be messed with, um, but that then your the younger programmers or the less experienced programmers can um, still build on top of your functionality without you worrying about them messing certain things up uh, accidentally. So, it, yeah, it's it's a... It's hard to say, honestly, what the best approach is there. Um, but I, I do hate that Unity has this really overbearing tendency to make a lot of their stuff private and a lot of their stuff internal, which is even worse. It's just a giant dick move. Um, okay, so this is going to be using Unity Engine.ui. Uh, it's going to be derived from Slider. Uh, we're going to need to do a couple of things. I'm going to go ahead and say serialize field private. Uh, not private. I'm going to make this protected. Protected. It's conceivable that this might change at some point. Um, so we're going to say serialize field protected float um, increment is equal to, let's do 0.1f. So this is the default increment value, I think, for Unity. Um, so we're going to say... I want to clamp it to a range because that that could get a little too weird. Plus, I don't have a float clamp here. Hmm. We might also add some attributes. Uh, it's getting hard to keep track of all the attributes in my head. There's a bunch of attributes that I made at work, and I never remember if I like made them at home as well, or if I like made them at, at work only, and it gets kind of confusing to try and remember all of that ahead of time. Um, okay, so before we do anything else, we're just going to kind of let that go. Uh, I am going to go ahead and add a tooltip to this, and we're just going to say uh, size of the increment to move the slider at when just values. Okay, uh, which means that I am going to have to say protected, actually no, let's go ahead and say public float increment, and we'll say get uh, return increment. I don't, do I need this to really be a settable thing at runtime? Eh, why not? It's equal to value. 
Um, so in this case, I could actually use a public field. Um, but this is actually how I've kind of gotten used to coding at work. So we have a protected base field and then a public field or a public getter and setter for it. Um, just because that kind of helps keep code a little cleaner. Uh, but that's, again, another uh, issue of philosophy for programmers. Um, so aside from that, I don't really have much that I need to do. So we're going to go ahead and say um, we have our increment. Then I can go back to here. Let's just kind of see how this is. Wholesale, and we'll just adjust it. So this is going to be. I'm going to use camel case because that's what I do for getters. And da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this is protected up, ah, protected. I'm also going to make this virtual float step size. Um, we're going to say instead of times 0.1f, we're just going to say times increment and that's pretty much all I need to do um, like at the end of the day that's actually all we really need uh, so there's gonna be one F2 um, so now I need to override the function that was using those values which is down here and I'm essentially just gonna and I'm going to probably get mad because I'm willing to bet that one of those things is probably protected. <laughs> Ooh. Ah, frack. Hold on. Hold on. I am using an older version of Unity, so this is probably not up to date anymore. There we are. Let's see here. Whole numbers. So now I gotta look for this again. Um, so there is still a step size. That's the same at least. Uh, I'm assuming that this is the same as well. Then why are you mad? Because I'm kind of thinking that you're actually the exact same. You are exactly the same. Why are you mad? What? What? going on here. This is the correct commit line. This is interesting. Hmm. Comments on my custom slider. Custom slider implementation to add new features and solve bugs that are hidden in the default Unity UI by private variables and functions. Very much true. Actually, fun fact that, uh, or, well, not fun fact, but um, that does remind me of something that I wrote. Let's see if I can up real quick. Um, I think I have like a wrapper. Oh no, it's, yeah, it's like, uh, so I have this, like, this class called uh, editor audio utility. And that's basically a, a wrapping class to just access a bunch of stuff that Unity's editor can do, but for some reason is, is marked internal and it's stupid. <laughs> There are a couple of other classes that I have that are like that, and it's just so frustrating. Um, however, what's really frustrating is why this won't work. So override on move. Why on earth were you mad about that? Hold on. Whatever, Unity, you were just being dickish, I guess. Okay. Um, so I'm also going to go ahead and grab this and make that a general summary XML comment because that way it actually gives me tooltips. Um, right. So cool. And that's not a thing. Okay. Because of course it's not. Which means that I need to figure out where Axis is and then I got to figure out how to expose that. I gotta get mad. Oh my goodness. Unity, you're gonna give me a freaking. <sighs> cool. So we're gonna do this. You are kidding me. Oh my god, it's inaccessible. Ah! <laughs> 
It's a private enum. Are you kidding me, Unity? God, ridiculous. <sighs> cool. So we got to do like all of this garbage. And then we got to make direction be a thing. Uh, I hate it when Unity does this. Looks like I copied their whole UI slider.cs and re-implemented it. Oh, is this actually derived from UI slider? No, it's just called slider. Okay. Um, ugh. Yeah, I hate when Unity does this. It's just... It's so dumb. Um, like, there is zero reason why you should ever make a private enum. The only time it's acceptable, it's not a reason to do it, it's just acceptable that you did it, is if it's a class that is never going to be derived from and nothing ever needs to use that enum ever that you could possibly conceive of. Like, throughout... From this point on to the end of the t of the entire universe, there is never a person that will ever, ever need to access that enum. That is the only time it is acceptable for you to make a private enum. Otherwise, they should at least be protected. Ugh, this is disgusting. I hate looking at my code. Um, so I guess, geez, let's just try to organize this a little bit better. Not, not very well, though. Um, and again, we're going to make this protected. Because obviously Unity can't do that. So let's go ahead and do this. Do this. Mm -hmm. UI slider. Okay. I I avoid using the UI prefix for my stuff just because um, I've worked with NGUI before and NGUI likes to do that. Um, so if I'm ever working on a project that for some reason has NGUI, I don't want my scripts to conflict with it. So I try to use... I try to use names that are more descriptive, I guess. But then again, I mean, if you basically just re-implemented their entire UI, their entire slider code, then brah, why not? Um, okay. Oh, geez. Nope. We're going to keep that in there for a second. Um, we're going to rename that to be capital A. And you are, yeah, of course, we're not doing How do you already have... Oh, because of course you do. <laughs> oh my god, you're going to give me an aneurysm unity. Cool, so these all have to be freaking just like that. Oh, and good, you're all messed up now too. Cool, cool. I love it when it does that. Okay, so we have our axes and our actual axis value and now I need to see what reverse value is yeah. this is terrible 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 miss unity okay let's make this protected da, 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 da. That. Add at Unity. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. And of course, set. Okay. Yeah, that's about right. So let's see. Where are you? You're kidding me. Why on earth would you be mad about this then? What? All right, hold on. <laughs> what? It's their exact same code, and it's throwing an error. Why? Uh, hold on. Who wants to bet that it is because of something stupid? Oh, 
Okay, so now it, it does actually legitimately throw that. I, I mean, I can go ahead and throw... Uh, interesting. Here's the UI I based mine on. Let's take a look and give it time. Let's see. Oh, are you like, oh, this is just like a description about the entire approach to designing UI. Yeah, there are a few good breakdowns on on the subject for it. Uh, I probably should actually do even more research than what I've already done, just to kind of get things to look right. Oh, sure. Yeah, I will look at that. I'm curious. Nice. Oh, and it's like jumping between all of these for you. Yeah. This is one of the things that I'm actually sad about for my my uh, UI style because because I'm going for that like retro blocky look. Everything has to be a little bit larger, and I just have so little space. To work with things like this like i can't kind of shove everything off to the side and have this nice uh background type thing so it's it's kind of difficult to do um these nice uh like things like tool tips and all that just because i don't want to i don't want to make it feel too modern i want it to feel a little bit uh archaic and old um so i'm always kind of sad whenever i see these nice like minimalist uis and i'm like oh i would love it it's like mm, i can't um, anyway, so I guess this is super strange. Um, da -da 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 -da. Is there really not another set function? Ah, here we are. I'm going to say, that has to be the case. There has to be a whole other function, which is private, but the other one is not. Why, Unity? Why are you so bad? That is so... Utterly, utterly stupid. That was our problem. Um, also, they're doing that really annoying thing that I do. Who, who doesn't use braces? The only time you can not use braces is if it's the same line if. If you're doing two line ifs, you should use braces. Otherwise, it's blasphemy. So much more legible. Okay. Okay. Old style limitations. Yeah. I implemented that in my game, but some people were confused by it. I need to make another pass on it. But the error key buttons you have make it more clear what's going on. Yeah, I I still think that um So it I guess it comes down to again like a a sort of um what your approach is, like what your philosophy is for these things. You can be minimalist, which is usually good for aesthetics, like it makes things look clean and efficient. But if you're going for options, I actually think that it's better to go for the maximalist. Maximalist, I think that's how you say it. Um, it's not maximist, I'm pretty sure it's maximalist. Um, where you try to give as much information as you can, because they're all, like the more information you give players when you're setting up, when you're showing them options, the, more, the worst thing that can happen is the more they'll understand the, the option more clearly um and i found that it's it's better to try and be as as clear as possible when creating controls for the ui uh, for options that it makes it very obvious what they're going to do at any given moment um now sometimes that's not necessarily true because like i said I, you can see that i have quite a few things that are just kind of like implied buttons um but they never actually tell you to click uh and to that to that extent i think that Games like, I should have taken a, a screenshot of it to show you all. Um, games like Dishonored's options menu, which I guess I could actually Google real quick. Um, let's see if I can get an image here. Like, this is all, oh, okay, not that, obviously, because it's terrible loading. Um, you can see that they use this uh, arrow layout to let you know if you can go left or right. Um, for... Uh, let's see, where was it? 
sliders obviously have uh, distinct increments. Um, but for all of their toggleable options, it's not just a on or off box, it's a no and a yes. Uh, and you see both of those all the time, and it's very obvious which one is selected. Um, so you can see here that no is selected, it's highlighted, it's got an arrow pointing to it, basically all the stuff that makes you think that it's, it, it is or is not highlighted. Um, but you can very clearly see that something is interactable that way. Um, and that's kind of an interesting approach. I don't think I'm going to go that far, because um, I do like my balance approach right now. But um, this is probably the most descriptive and immediately understandable UI I think I've seen in a long time. Um, but yeah, and that's that's the thing, right? It's not, ironically enough, Bethesda is doing pretty bad at it, but it is doing amazing at it because it has always been a like tried and true PC centric uh, game company. Like obviously they do all of their stuff on consoles too now, but it's it's pretty obvious that the people working at id are like they want their PC players to have options, which is why all of their PC things have insane amounts of options. Uh, and of course, Dishonored Two was made in the Void Engine, which is powered by id Tech, which is you know its game engine. So it makes sense that it would be this uh, much more uh, maximalist approach. Anyway, uh, so let's go ahead and pop back here. Uh, so I can, for the sake of just doing this, let's go ahead and grab this. Uh, I'm going to grab... Mm -hmm. uh, we'll go to... Do I want to do graphics options? Uh, we'll do game options to start, because I think that's going to be a little bit easier for us. I'm going to turn this on. And for now, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to create UI. Uh, we're going to create a slider. And then I'm going to remove this component. I'm going to add our custom slider to it. Uh, let's go da, 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 da. all the way up here. Now, it's going to look exactly the same as the base slider. Oops. The target graphic, huh? which I'm guessing is probably fill. Um, and it looks the same because of the editor. Uh, so we actually need to make a new custom editor for this. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this. Um, so I'm going to have to come down to here. We're going to go to UGUI components, create folder sliders. Okay, we're going to make an incremental slider editor. Might be an interesting video or review video to make game settings. Yeah, um, I I feel like a lot of that has been done in a very good way by Total Biscuit. Um, if you saw his uh, his videos, um, he was very very good about basically the first thing he did. I think for most of it. Actually, it was either the first or the last thing he did with every one of his videos was to go into the options menu, have a look, see what options were exposed, and then either uh, complain or like say, wow, these are amazing, and it's great that the developers are putting these in there. Um, and that's kind of my, been my philosophy uh, in determining if my options menus are good enough, is like, well, are, are there any other things that I can expose? Because there's no real reason to not expose certain things to your players. Um, uh, or if you choose to hide things from your players, then that's just for some reason treating them as if they're stupid. So I I try to I try to expose whatever I can, just because I feel like that that will help people have a better playing experience, in my opinion. Um, anyway, so this is going to be a common editor. This is going to be using sleepyowl.common. Um, this is going to be also using you know the editor the editor .ui. It's going to derive from slider editor. It's going to use uh, custom editor type of incremental slider. Uh, it's going to also be a fallback for all of the ones that derive from it. Okay, uh, so we're going to say override on enable, do base dot enable. You come down here and say override on inspector GUI. Um, my typical approach to these is to put the inspector GUI or the new fields on top. Um, and I'm not really going to be doing anything too crazy, so probably okay. Um, let's go ahead and come down here and look at some of this just to kind of get... Yeah, it's fine. It's going to make it a little bit more messy than I would like, but it'll work. 
Um, hmm. So let's go ahead and save this. Uh, let's see. And there's a whole level of accessibility options that I'm not even aware of, not just colorblindness settings, but screen reader support, etc. Yeah, um, accessibility options have been a little bit more difficult for me just because I'm I'm not really sure what I can do accessibility wise. Uh, I mean, I can I can try to put in things for th for like colorblindness, um, but that's that's not really an option. I feel I feel like well, I mean that that can be something in the options menus. Uh, say for like um, I think it was Battlefield Three or maybe Battlefield Four. One of the battlefields um, actually had a very cool feature in its options where you could turn on colorblind mode for um, ally and enemy icons and what that would do is it would basically change the color tinting for allies and enemies names and icons on your map um, so that if you're colorblind and you can't say like tell the difference between red and blue then instead of showing red and blue icons which it was using for for allies and or enemies and allies respectively um, it would show you like off yellow and uh, purple I want to say they, they, I, I forget what the colors are because um, there are different types of color blindness uh, and actually it had an option that would let you cycle through them all so you could find one that actually worked with you um, depending on what your type of color blindness was and that was a very cool thing but I don't really have that sort of thing um, so my approach has largely been to uh, try to design my textures and my my actual color uh, um, crap what's the term Not color theory although that kind of does fall into it um, my color selections for levels and such, so that if you are colorblind, it won't matter very much. Um, but yeah, that's a whole other thing. Uh, anyway, so for this, we pretty much just have have we just have the one um, value, which is increment. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and say up here, da, 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 protected, serialized object, or not serialized object, serialized property. Um, that. I'm going to call it m increment. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to say m, oops, not m box. m increment is equal to serialized object. Find property. Blah blah blah. Increment k. Uh, and then, because I'm sure that this is not exposed, I'm betting all every yep every single one of them. Every freaking single one of them. Cool. Um, so we're going to go ahead and make some new protected serialized properties because I need to access some of them. Serialized property, and I'm going to just assume this is m whole numbers. Um, let's go back to here, take a look at this. I'm pretty sure it's whole numbers. So, yep, m whole numbers. That's what it is. Uh, let's go back to here. Uh, we're going to say m. Oops. Whole numbers is equal to serialized object. I'll find property. And whole numbers. Okay. So that should let me uh, determine if whole numbers is selected. Mostly because I don't want to show the increment if whole numbers are selected. Um, if if that is the case, then it should just use one. Uh, otherwise, it's going to use the increment. Um, so all I need to do here is say, uh, let's see. First things first, we're going to say serialized object dot update, and then after that. And we're going to say serialized object dot apply modify properties. Uh, those are two lines of code that you need if you're going to do any sort of custom inspectors. Uh, because if you don't have these, then without serialized dot update, your values will not update to reflect what you put into the fields. And if you don't apply modify properties, then it won't actually save and it'll get blown away. So you need both of those. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say if not m underscore whole numbers dot bool value. Um, then we're going to go ahead and say editor GUI layout dot property field m increment. Okay, pretty straightforward. So that's all I needed to do for that. Um, so if we let that compile, in addition to seeing all of the terrible shaders, uh, we will also be able to see um, an inspector that is somewhat more useful. Uh, the next step is actually going to be a fairly simple one in the sense that we're just going to add some component menus or some context commands to uh, create the slider with the like two clicks basically and I'm doing that because um, I don't want, I, I hate uh, basically right clicking saying create the standard slider and then unhooking that and rehooking up everything by hand it's just bleh. so 
to give you a sense of what I'm talking about, uh, we're going to go ahead and come down here to the root. We're going to say create uh, UI and slider. You can see that we have all these values that are, auto are automatically filled in. Let's go ahead and remove this component. We're going to add um, an incremental slider. And we got to assign our graphics and all that. Once we do. Although I guess I could set it to none. It wouldn't really matter. Um, and now we got to do the fill rect and handle rect and all that, which is not fun. Um, but we do have our increment. What is happening here? Oh, oh because I have to write. OK. So I think this is what we want. And then this is our fill area. Um, so if we have whole numbers checked off, you can see that our increment goes away. Normally, I... Oh, God, I really hate doing this. Oh, don't make me... Oh, I'm going to do it anyway. Okay. So I, I have a huge disdain for um, controls being hidden by something that's really far away. Uh, this isn't too bad because it's at the very top of the script, but it is still a usability concern. Um, so we're actually going to... God, this sucks. I have to rewrite the entire base slider. Um... UI, because of course, uh, and then I need to move this increment field down to below the whole numbers field, which is just, mm, just so mwah, lovely. So, uh, folders. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, let's get to it. So first things first, uh, let's go ahead and come over to here. We're going to go back to here. I'm going to jump back. I want to go back to UI. I need to go to editor, UI, grab our slider editor. With any luck, it won't be that bad. It's not terrible. It's not great, but it's not terrible. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and copy this entire chunk of code. Oh, and I do need to do this. I always forget to do this. If you don't have that can edit multiple objects, then when you highlight multiple ones, it'll just hide the inspector, which is always annoying. Um, so I'm just going to paste these down at the bottom for now. Um, I know that's going to cause some problems, but we'll get to that in a second. Uh, uh, we are going to call on enable. And that means that this is not going to derive from slider editor anymore. It's actually going to derive from selectable editor. So I have to rewrite their entire freaking thing. Um, OK, so we're going to call based on enable, do all this fun stuff, that's all fine. Uh, we're going to get rid of this whole numbers thing, because that's now down here. Uh, we're going to move this down to here, right about there, and let's see. Um, although, speaking of accessibility, um, Garrett, did you see the, um, the recent ruling that just went into law for video games. Uh, it was it was something that other forms of media, like movies and TV and all that, um, had to uh, adjust to already. But move or, but games had have have been getting um, basically a deferment um, that any any game with chat input, like you know typing into a chat bar, uh, requires text to speech now. Um, like it's legally obligated to have that. Uh, which is why people are theorizing that Bethesda and a bunch of other uh, game companies have been moving towards a emote type system where you can only do like you know, Dark Souls style emotes, um, because that means you don't have to come up with text to speech, which is going to seriously hamper chat in uh, video games for quite a few years. I'm assuming just because that's a like chat is not terrible to implement, but text to speech is it's a really terrible thing it's very resource intensive um so it's it'll be interesting to see how that comes out um like what ends up happening there i'm sure that it's not going to be super like strictly policed but still the trip the big triple a games probably would be um why are you mad oh it's because i didn't delete the one up here all right um so i'm going to move this down to here And get rid of this function. I'm also going to comment this. So this is base slider uh, properties. And then this is going to be our incremental slider properties. OK. 
Okay, uh, we're just going to go ahead and move this. And there's our update stuff that I was talking about. You have... Oh, you are disgusting. I hate it when they do casts like this. Ugh. Sorry. My, my disdain for Unity's coding has kind of come to the surface there. Uh, using Unity engine.ui, so I need to read the other things. Um, no, that's not too bad, though. Let's see. Yeah, I saw that. I didn't know that all passed a few years ago. Seems like it was underreported. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's one of those things where like it was passed and no one took notice of it because who, like who would, um, unless you're unless you are specifically interested in, in the topic of accessibility, it's probably not something that would really pop up on your radar. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens because like like you said there, I th I think the the people that will be most affected and, and will be will have a hard the hardest time with it is probably going to be smaller developers um, because larger developers can sink the cost or can eat the cost of putting in text-to-speech. They probably won't. They will probably just use the emote system from now on, for at least for a while. Um, but that is something that I feel is going to sadly, pun like, basically punish small, pe small teams, um, which is really, yeah, it just really sucks. Um, but, you know, it is an accessibility thing, and it's important to have that. Um, okay, so let me paste that. There we go. Uh, okay, so now I can get rid of this. And because... Ugh, geez, I hate it when they do that. Um, hold on. And because I have a personal animus about not having the script field um, at the very top of this, I am going to go ahead and just do custom editor utility dot draw script field save it as an object okay uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. I think we're good here so this should now um, basically be the same as the default slider inspector except it's going to have a script field at the top and our increment will be below the whole numbers if it is enabled or if it's not enabled um, Yeah, that's that's why we were like we were at work. We were kind of discussing this. That's probably why you're seeing that emote style system um, show up more instead of traditional ch uh, text chat input, because it means that the big companies don't have to deal with it. <laughs> so that's probably why they did it, actually. Uh, okay, so yes, you can see that we oh, hold on, Ray. So you can see that we now have um, our increment shows up here. If I uncheck that, cool. So I can basically, if whole numbers is enabled, then that in increment will go away. And if it's disabled, then we'll actually be able to set this. Do I have tooltips? Hooray! Cool. Um, blah, 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 blah. I'm probably going to add some attributes real quick, just because I want to do that. Um, let's go to attributes. Let's see. Where? Material, serialization, list, value checks. That's not what I want. Um, tag, serialization, menu max range. Uh, let's go for create folder numbers, I guess. It's not exactly great. Um, uh, let's go ahead and just do this. Create folder clamping. I don't actually remember if I have a clamped. I don't. That must be at work. Okay. So I'm going to basically create a or an attribute for clamping um, float and int values to be a min value at least. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and say create. Uh, let's go ahead and say min value, which of course I didn't capitalize properly, so that's not going to work. I'll call this just min value. 
create C sharp script and we're going to call this min value attribute. And I'm just going to create this basically so that I can make sure that increment can't be below zero, well, below or at zero. Um, not that it's ever likely to reach that, but it's something that I, I try to do. Um, property attribute. Basically, ever since I started making a bunch of tools at work, I've tried to focus on usability for all of my stuff, <laughs> which tends to cause me to go a little bit over budget in terms of time, but it makes the overall experience much more pleasant to work with. So we're going to go ahead and say, uh, well, I don't need anything in here yet. Um, this is going to be a public read-only uh, float. Hmm. I guess we would say float value is equal to zero f. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and say public read only float uh, float sorry int int value is equal to zero, and then we're gonna have a public oops, public bool oops, read only bool uh, is int is equal to false. Okay, we're gonna come down here and say public. Uh, min value attribute, and we'll give it a float value. This dot float value is equal to value is int is equal to false. Flas false. Uh, let's go ahead and copy this. Pretty much going to do the same thing except for the int. Int, int value and then true. Got to take the trash cans out in the rain. Oof, that is brutal. Well, if it makes you feel any better, it's been snowing here. We got like seven, eight inches in one day, basically. Ugh. Uh, okay. So let's go ahead. I'm going to comment this so that I don't forget what it is. Um, attribute and clamps a float or int field to... Value. Okay. And I could actually, I might already have something for this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to check out my min max range. Okay. So I already have this. Well, no, that's a different thing. Never mind. I was going to say, because I could. I guess instead of making this min value, do like a min max clamp, and then I can arbitrarily pass that information. Uh, nah, I can separate them out. That's not too bad. Um, well, ugh. Ugh. All right, yeah. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it as one as one go instead of having it be two separate attributes. Because if I have a min value, then I need a max value. If I'm gonna need both, I might as well have just one that's called like min max clamp attribute um, and that will just let me clamp things a little bit easier so let's go ahead and say right click create folder min max clamp create c sharp script min max clamp attribute <laughs> hmm that up. And once we have this uh, attribute stuff taken care of, um, we'll do a quick context creation uh, script. Well, not script. Uh, probably it'll just be a function inside of an existing script that I already have, or should already have. It's going to be interesting to see if I do already have it. Uh, and uh, then I'll basically be done with the slider stuff. And we can move on to doing some other UI audio. All right, uh, so this is going to be common. This is going to be a property attribute. Uh, one of the things that I try to use, actually, system dot attribute usage is going to be uh, it's going to be a field attribute. That's the only thing it can do. Um, there is not going to be allow multiples equal to false. Okay, and and so this is just a line that you can use to specify how your attributes can be used. Um, so, for example, 
uh, if I don't have this, if I let that go, and I save, uh, if we go back here to incremental slide, and I go up here to increment, and I add min max clamp to this, uh, you can see that it's correct. But I could also, in theory, do that here, min max clamp. Oh, except, uh, oh, interesting. Hmm, I wonder if it saved it. Let's change this from like field dot. Let's see, module parameter, I think property is what I want. So if I save that and then go back here, there we go. That's correct now, and this is wrong, um, or it's squiggled. So the idea behind this line is that it lets you just have a little bit more fine tuned control, and it, it just helps you uh, avoid situations in which other developers might accidentally use it in an, in an incorrect capacity. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and change that back to that can only be used on fields. Um, so if you're doing any sort of custom property stuff, um, like attributes, I definitely recommend uh, using system.attribute usage whenever you make these, just because it makes your makes your life a little bit easier in the long run, because it means that people will have a harder time accidentally using your attributes in the wrong way. Um, anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and say public float um, min value is equal to F public float oops float max value is equal to put one F and then we're just gonna go ahead and say uh, public read only is I'm sorry rule is float is equal to false uh, these need to be read only as well only okay and then we're going to go ahead and say uh, t -t 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 public min max clamp attribute, which is going to take a float min value, float max value, and uh, that's pretty much it. So we're going to come down here and say public min max attribute. Uh, we're going to say int min value, int max value. Okay. So we're going to say this dot min value is equal to min value. This dot max value is equal to max value. And then this dot is float is equal to true. Go ahead and copy this. And do this. Uh, we're going to go ahead and say this dot min value is equal to min value. That's all fine. It's going to be equal to false. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and rename this to is, and I will keep this as float. That's fine. <laughs> How bad is the rain there? Is it like really coming down, or is it just kind of like a drizzle? I would assume from the squishing sound effects that it would be really, really a downpour, but. Okay. So with this, um, probably now. Mm -hmm. No, I can't do that. I don't know if I want. Okay, here. How about we do this? Is equal to float dot max value versus is equal to zero f. Is equal to zero max value. Those are good defaults, I think. Um, although, perhaps I should do this. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and let's comment this real quick. Convenience attribute Values pretty much going to do this. Number of fields to be clamped between two values. Minimum. Minimum. I can never spell minimum value to clamp two, I guess. That's not great. Um, versus. Maximum. 
Okay, let's go ahead and grab these and paste this in here. Uh, let me say between two float values or between two int values. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and let that compile. We're going to need to add an editor for that. So we're going to need to go to attributes. It's not bad, a light rain, more than a drizzle, less than a downpour. So, uh, well, no, I guess a drizzle is heavier than a sprinkling. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of sad that we don't really have a good word in English for a, I guess you would just say, a, I don't know, I guess you would call it a drizzle. Hmm. I don't know. Sometimes it's hard to accurately convey how much rain you're getting. Um, so clamping, min-max clamp is what it's called. Eight folder min max clamp. Oh, that's not how you spell clamp. So it's called min max rain. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Wrong thing. So it's min max clamp attribute. So print script script min max clamp attribute drawer. So the reason that I'm creating this whole thing instead of just using Unity's built-in range is because I don't I don't really want it to have a theoretical max. I just want it to have a theoretical min. Um, so a, a, an inspector slider that goes all the way up to float infinity or float maximum value is a bit insane to do. So this is just a compromise for that, basically. Um, Okay, so we're going to do a couple of things. Editor, using Unity Editor, using sleepyout.common. Okay, so this is a property drawer. This is a custom property drawer type of min max clamp attribute. All right, and then we're just going to go ahead and say um, override. Don't need to override property height. We just need to do the GUI stuff. Um, so all we're going to do is say, um, if, well, attribute as minimax clamp attribute, we're going to just go ahead and say, um, var attr is equal to that, which means we're going to go to this, da, 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 da. and then we're just going to go ahead and say, if attr dot, well, actually what we're going to do is we're going to say, uh, if property dot type is equal to let's see float or property dot property type is equal to that dot an integer. So if that's the case, it's either one of those. Uh, we're gonna do this, and I guess I should probably. So we're going to go ahead and actually do this. Nah, no, that's fine. Um, else, we're going to go ahead and just say editor GUI dot help box position based off of this, based off of a warning. That's going to basically just be string dot format, blah, blah, blah. It's going to say field boo, 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 is not a number. That be based on property dot name. Okay, pretty simple there. And then all we're going to do here is say if property dot property type. Oh, not path. Type is equal to that dot float. And then we're going to do one thing. Else we're going to do this. Okay. So if our property is a float property, then we basically want to say. Um, well, let's see. We're going to say. Uh, property dot float value is equal to attr dot is float question mark. Then we're just going to say mathf dot clamp between uh, attr dot min value and attr dot max value. Otherwise, oh, I need to actually give it that value, don't I? No, so we're going to give it property dot float value. 
So otherwise, we're gonna basically do the same thing, but we're gonna say clamp. Uh, I don't have a clamp to an inch, right? No, I just have that. Okay. Um, so otherwise, we are going to go ahead and just say instead of that, we're gonna say mathf dot round to int. We'll give it this float value. And we have to use mathf.round to int instead of just casting it to an int because I have learned that just casting it to an int will always round all the way down, no matter how high it is. So 2.9 would round to, if you cast it to an int, is just going to come out as 2, which is stupid, but eh, what are you going to do? Okay, so that should clamp it. Uh, let's go ahead and... We're pretty much going to do the whole the same thing here, except the only difference is um, we don't actually care if it's supposed to clamp or not, because that's what it's going to have to do. And we're going to change this to a um, int value. And then we'll cast this all to an int. Well, hmm. I guess actually the best thing to do would be just to do this, wouldn't it? That's probably the best way to handle that. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and we're gonna come back to let me get rid of you. We're gonna come back to incremental slider. We're gonna make this min max clamp. Uh, we're gonna say min value of I guess just zero f is fine. So let's go ahead and, you know what, I'm going to make it like 0 0.001 or something like that. Something very tiny. Uh, we'll just go ahead and let that compile. Float.epsilon? Oh, that's not a website. <laughs> um, what is float.epsilon? Oh. It's interesting. What is it? Okay, so that's compiled. Uh, look at this. Da, 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 da. Got some need to stretch because my back is starting to get stiff, hurt a little bit. Still have a little bit of a back injury. Um, I think it's mostly fixed by now, but I do have a little bit of soreness whenever I sit poorly for too long. Um, okay, so... Really? Oh, you know why? <laughs> I forgot to actually draw the property fields. Oops. Um, yeah, so this is going to basically just be this. So we're going to go ahead and say editor GUI dot property field position property pretty straightforward there it's a very small float value that lets you use to mean close enough to zero to be zero for floating points oh okay so that's that's the uh, like the rounding error basically like floats have a problem getting total precision so you can usually get like a just close enough for it to count, basically. That's pretty nice, though. I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that was a built-in value. I thought you had to just kind of like calculate it yourself. That's cool. Oh, man. <laughs> I was uh, on the subject of things that I did not know about. Uh, today at work, we found out that uh, so I'm gonna make this zero and ha ha nice so I can make this like negative ten whatever and it'll round back up uh, except I can also like scrub it forever so I can in theory make this that and it's fine so let's go ahead and make this point oh one nice and um, let's make this even better like point one that's a good default because um, that's what Unity uses. Uh, that's pretty much all we need to do. Um, so the only thing that's left is adding a custom. Uh, let's go ahead and delete this. A custom uh, context creation option, uh, which will let me just like right click and say create UI SOS and then all this fun stuff. So, got to remember where that is. 
them. So I think that's going to be in our... I mean, I don't think it's definitely going to be in our editor stuff. Um, let's go ahead and collapse all this. Editor utility, I think this is what I want. I'm 40% sure. Yay! Okay, um, so I can go ahead and come down to here, and we're probably going to yank most of the code from Unity's uh, creation for this. So let's go to UI, uh, let's go to our editor. I think we want, let's see, drop down editor, graphic editor. This is what we want. And we are going to just grab our slider code. Oh, hold on. I missed it. Canvas, drop down, input, scroll bar, slider. Oh, you son of a. <sighs> We're just going to copy this for now. Uh, let's come back to here. Paste this in. Press say again. slider you're gonna be mad oh actually really I didn't realize uh, that was public that's kind of nice um so this is get standard resources which I'm pretty sure is just this stuff which is nothing which is annoying um Hmm. And of course, place UI elements is not what I want either. So probably I'm going to have to do this by hand, which is gross. Uh, let's go ahead and come back to here. Go to menu options, and then default controls are probably non-existent. Let me guess. Oh, no, you're in UI. Oh, that's interesting. Here we are. Yeah, this is so. This is what I was doing. I'm just gonna basically move this chunk of code. Uh, so I get to do all of this. Woo! Isn't that fun? Okay, we're gonna just go over here. Add that. Uh, we don't need to return root, fortunately. Um, mm -hmm, I'm assuming that I made that a thing. I did not. Oh no, I did not. Why didn't I make that a thing? Because I have not. I have not needed to. Gross. Okay, so we're gonna live with that. Um, knob, sprite, I'm guessing, so I can just make this knob sprite. Okay. Standard sprite. Background sprite. Okay, so for this I need create UI root. And the size minus the element size, which is, I have no idea. Ah, damn it, I hate it when I do that. Where are you described? K width and K thin height, so that's 160 and 20. Twenty F. Okay. Uh, let's see. Selectable color as default selectable color. Let's see. Um, I used to arbitrarily use point zero zero one F for something. This is more explicit. Oh, the, uh, talking about the flow dot epsilon. Yeah. Yeah, there. I, I've actually only recently kind of delved into kind of using the like the dots for these things, mostly because most of them are just min and max values. I didn't realize that does float have more than that then. Oh yeah, it does have the non. I forgot about that. Um, 
Oh yeah, and then positive and negative and negative again. Uh, I always love them. I always... I mean, I hate nons, but nons are also hilarious. Um, who doesn't love a good non? Uh, let's see. So default selectable color is what? You gonna give me something to go on here? Okay, so that's just white. Why don't you just use that? Let's see, here's our slider. We've got default selectable color. Like all of it's just white. It seems very strange to reuse that code multiple times. I guess probably color dot white is returning a new color every time and technically is more efficient, but eh, it's a small enough thing that I wouldn't really think it would matter. Um, all right, so the only thing that's really left here is instead of making this uh, a slider, I'm going to make it a incremental slider. Okay, uh, that's pretty easy, and that's pretty much all I need to do. So. Um, I should be able to let this go. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and do this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make this just say like SOS. Actually, no, I'm going to do UI slash SOS. And do pretty much the same thing here. So let's. Oh, that's funny. No real reason for us to have two of these things, so. Okay, so let's let that compile. Uh, and now I should be able to just right click and create a slider. Um, I won't have to worry about assigning everything. Everything are already, or will already be referenced. It'll make it much easier on me. At least that's the hope anyway. And while that's compiling, I'm gonna take a drink. There is also um, some extra functionality, now that I think about it, that I need to build into my incremental slider. Um, I completely spaced on this. I thought about it before the stream, and I forgot to do it. Um, basically, I need to... Um, how to put it? Well, I guess that's not really much of a problem. This might not be an issue, never um, we'll see once I actually build this. Okay, uh, so let's delete this, and let's go ahead and right-click, create UI, SOS, and I'm going to say um, incremental slider, and then boom, it's there, everything's set up, it is our incremental slider, you can tell, uh, and yeah, so that's, that's a one-click process now, which is nice. Um, so the only thing that I need to do here now is I basically want to change it so that my increment can be a little bit more manageable. Although what's really funny about this, I'm sure, and by funny is probably going to be closer to tragic, um, most of these probably don't actually need that now that I look at it. I think I only really need that in very specific areas. So this is just going to be using whole numbers most of the time. Uh, for most of my options, because it doesn't make it doesn't make sense in most option screens for most options to um, have very fine granularity when you're scrubbing the slider, uh, because that could take forever on say like console. So typically, what you'll do is you'll confine it to whole numbers, and then if you have a value that can be sub, um, like a sub number or not a sub number, uh, not a whole number, then you can. Uh, let people input that text manually, and then the slider will position itself properly. It's just that it won't uh, it won't try to clamp it. Um, although I'm actually a little concerned that it might, which would be troublesome. Oh, excuse me, but that's why we did the uh, the whole incremental slider thing. Anyway, so let's go ahead and let's see. We have our F mod sound buttons. So let's go ahead. and apply to all of this. Uh, oh, 
Oh, I can't. It's going to be on the other slider. Duh. So, <laughs> man, that <is> slide. <laughs> ah, I forgot about that. Every time, I always forget. I swear that's going to confuse people who look at this game one day. <laughs> okay, um, so we're going to go to, let's see. Uh, slider. Wait, what? I could have sworn that we did this. Hold on. I want slider sound. That's interesting. It just didn't want to show up. Slide. Oh, hello. That's interesting. Huh. That's why. Okay, so I need to change these names a little bit. Um, so this is something that you may or may not know. Uh, if, you, if you've done any sort of add component menus, you've probably run into this. If you haven't, um, when you make an add component menu and you add that to a class, um, whatever this last option is in the uh, component menu path is what will be displayed whenever you try to look for this. So for example, if I try to add, so if I try to add slider to this, you'll see that one, there is no fmod slider sound or anything like that. Um, there is an fmod UI sound and all that, or fmod UI. Uh, and if I look for slider, you'll see that that shows up. But you'll notice that I actually have two here. One that's the, the built-in slider and one that's, that's just called slider. If we add that, that's the fmod slider sound. So what I need to do is I need to rename this to be, instead of a slider, it needs to be um, fmod slider sound. It's not great. Um, we could probably get away with calling it slider sound instead, um, but it's that's something to be aware of if you're ever working with uh, custom component menus, because it is something that occasionally I forget about, and it, uh, it does trip me up a little bit. Uh, so this is settings button. And this is button sound. This is settings button sound. And probably it should actually be fmod, but no, that's fine for now. So we'll let those compile. <laughs> Oof, man. Um. Trying to think of anything else that I really uh, saw recently in terms of game news. Um, I mean, aside from the cavalcade of nightmares that is Fallout 76, it's kind of not been a particularly busy day. Um, I do have a couple of things. Well, no, there's a couple of things coming out in a couple of weeks, but um, nothing right now that I can think of. I I guess Travis Strikes Again comes out later this week, and I'm totally going to get that. But uh, that's not particularly news. That's just me saying that I'm probably not going to be productive after Thursday for a little bit. Uh, oh, no, no, that's fine. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and add that. Uh, we're going to go... So now you can see that we have slider sound, which is much, 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 much better to use. Uh, we're going to go ahead and... Let's go for the basic button click is what I think I'm going to use. Frequency... Um, I can actually probably set this to be zero. And I think that should, in theory, uh, let us actually play those sounds as we would expect whenever it, it moves. Um, but we'll find out. So let's go ahead and save this. If it doesn't, this is going to be terrifying. It's going to sound like a nightmare, and it's probably going to freeze my game. But if it does work the way I'm expecting it to, then it will be great. and Everything will be nice. There will also be world peace. And pigs will fly. So we'll find out. Uh, 
Oh yeah, but I started talking about um, something that I hadn't done before, which was uh, working with 2018.3's prefab staging area. I found out that if if you're working on a prefab, the staging area has some weird considerations to work with um, in regards to things like the context options that we just made. Um, because if you search through a scene while the prefab stage is open, it does not actually grab the prefab stage. It grabs stuff in the real scene, which is confusing. So, uh, let's see, we wanted to go to game, I believe. Yeah, so now, yep, cool. So now now it's basically going to click uh, whenever we move it, because it only clicks whenever the value changes. And since these are whole numbers, it's only going to click whenever we you know, actually scrub, which is nice. Um, so it's only a problem if we get into weird subpoints. Which this is using full points, which is fine. Um, GW75 is a decent one to start out at. Uh, this is all fun. Ooh. I don't have you logged in. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and cancel. So that's working pretty well. Let's go ahead and stop this. Oh, and I just realized that I'm going to have to. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> I just did this at work. Um, one of the things that I need to do is I need to support multi-graphic buttons, um, by which I mean basic Unity buttons that allow you to have multiple transitions on multiple, well, yeah, multiple transitions on multiple targets, and that's something I did at work. Uh, and I probably am going to have to do that here too, which is great. So I'm writing two of the same bits of code, basically. But we're not going to do that tonight because that would take me way longer than the... Uh, than what I have left. <laughs> uh, okay, so I need to go back here to where you are. Let's open this up. You go here. Let's open you up. You go into the content. Uh, we want to go to show import hints amount. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, component. We want a slider sound. We need this VR click. Uh, frequency of zero. Okay. So let's go ahead and open that. There we go. Turn you off. Hit apply. Let's go ahead and turn this. Hit save. So the next big thing is going to be our new game menu. Or not new game, sorry. Um, load game menu. And that's going to be a mostly modal work, I think. I guess we'll probably have a button script on the actual buttons. Let's go ahead and do this. I'm just going to hit restart. So options, game. Okay. Working pretty well. So if we want to go to load, you can see that we have these three save files, and if I click on one, it pulls this up, and then we can say load, delete, or cancel. Uh, we need to play sound whenever I click on one, um, and it's awkward because I also need to play sound whenever I do that. Uh, so, this is going to be fun. So let's go ahead and hit cancel. For... Let's turn on our UI. Let's get rid of our game options. Um, let's hit save. Let's come back down here. Find our menus. Uh, let's see. We'll close this. Close these all. Uh, let's go to load game prefabs. We want to go to save game button, which I will simply just add a um, button sound. So we're going to go to Sleepy Owl UI, not that, not that. It's going to be uh, text first, audio, if not, UI, button sound, pretty simple. And I'm going to make this be our button click. Okay, nice and easy there. 
and then we're gonna go over here to load game. Let's go ahead and come down from here. And we'll do all this fun stuff. Um, so I'm going to need a couple of things. I'm gonna go ahead and say serialize field, mod sound ID, private, um, int, uh, confirm sound is equal to zero. Let's go ahead and serialize field, sound ID, private, int, cancel sound is equal to zero. Okay. And there are a couple of things that I want to do. Uh, so we're going to say on submit. Oof. 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 Okay, so we're going to go ahead and say cancel. Fmod sound manager dot play. Fmod cancel sound. Let's go ahead and just go ahead and copy that. Load. We are essentially going to do the same thing, except we're just going to say confirm sound. Okay, let's go ahead and copy that. Same thing. Same thing. I probably should have a reset sound now that I think about it. Um, like a, I'm actually going to add that over here. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and say create a 2D event. And we're going to call this like submit text. I'm not going to do anything with this, but that's something I should probably do. So whenever you hit enter to input text, it's going to like play a little sound. Um, that will let you know that you pressed it. Uh, okay. So blah, 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 blah. check save game. We don't care about that. Load game. We don't care about that. Generate buttons, don't care about that. Recycle buttons, nope, 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 and uh, nope. On save button, clicked button, nope. Save button has an enter, save button has an exit. Compile option, ah, here we are. So if we play this, then we want to say confirm, cancel. Same thing here. Those are both going to be confirmed, I believe. So that doesn't there. Okay, so I think that's all of the sound effects that I need for the load game. Okay, so we'll let that compile. And then when we play this time, it should just handle it without any extra input from us, honestly. Um, oh, I, I actually probably need to go to the the back button. Assuming it compiles within my lifetime. <sighs> All right. So let's go ahead and open this back up. That's a new game, sorry. Uh, uh, here we are. Uh, let's go ahead and hit save. And also, we're going to... Ah, stop it. There's my button. Back button, here we are. So we're just going to go to text quest, audio, fmod UI, button sound, pretty straightforward there. We're going to make this BR negative. So let's give this a shot. We should have audio interaction set up basically for all of our interactions now in the new game menu. Not new game, the load game menu. Um, we'll see what that looks like and sounds like. Okay, start. OK, 
Okay, so cancel doesn't happen, and neither does hitting no on delete. That's interesting. And if we hit back, okay, load. And if we hit load there, okay. No, okay. So we're missing a few things. Um, and I'm guessing that's because I don't actually have... Confirm load file option, confirm delete. Right, here we are. So if I do, okay, let's just do default. We're gonna break, um, then we're just gonna play like that, except it's gonna be our cancel sound. Okay, file option selected, same thing. We're just gonna go ahead and copy this and put it here. Okay, pretty straightforward. So let's just go ahead and let those compile. That should fix our little issue. Uh, when we, just real quick, I'm going to actually copy this because there's one more thing I need to do. Go all the way up to here. Load. Excuse me. Check save game. What I want to do here. Okay. So right about here is where I want to play. Confirm sound. So now, in theory, we should have all of those interactions actually. Abracadabra. All right. Let's go ahead and clear this. Let's try this one more time. It is nice to have audio in the menus. I do like having this uh, oral feedback. It just makes it feel a little bit better navigating through the menus now. It's one of those things that you never really realize that it's missing until you have it. Okay, so load, auto, cancel. So we're going to go ahead and so cancel there. It is kind of hard to tell if that's the other dinosaur or just the photo being loud. Probably do need to add a border to this though. Um, okay. So that those interactions do seem to be working. Okay. Cool. All right. Uh, so we might... We might leave it there for the night. Um, I'm going to continue doing the UI button audio stuff. Uh, but I th think for the most part, we're pretty much done. Like, There's nothing really more feature-wise that I need to do. It's all about setting up the audio now. Um, so the only thing that I really think I need to add is a submit text sound to give you a unique sound um, whenever you hit the enter button uh, to submit text. Just because that, again, would be a nice little tac uh, tactile feedback thing. Well, it's not tactile because you're not feeling it. You're just actually touching it. But it is a nice uh, audio feedback mechanism just to let you know that you've submitted something. Um, it's just going to be nice to have that that, uh, that audio feedback. So that'll be something that I work on next. Um, and I hopefully, hopefully I will have that uh, implemented by Thursday. Um, spend the last two days tracking F down FMOD bugs. Hoo-hoo! <laughs> That's probably going to be me in a little bit, I'm sure. Um fun. What bugs were you running into? Uh, I mean, besides probably whatever is built into FMOD's components. Uh, 
So let's see here. I go back to here. Uh, so I think moving forward, like I said, it's pretty much all straight basic audio hookups, just like making sounds be associated with buttons, um, and then some FMOD actual development, but that's something else. Um, so yeah, I think that's a pretty good place to stop for the night. Um, announcements. Okay, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be blindsided by any more schedule conflicts, so I think we'll be on track for Thursday's Dev Stream. Um, and we should be on track for Saturdays as well, I'm pretty confident, so we'll, we'll see. Um, if you use the max instances slash stealing, use the visualize setting, others don't update per frame, only on play. Oh! Oh! Ugh. That's interesting. Huh. Okay. Weird. I wonder why that is. Um, but that's useful for no to know. Huh. Okay. Curious. Well, thank you for that. I'll have to remember that. Um, but yeah. So uh, I think that's a pretty good place to stop for the day. So uh, we should be back on Thursday at our, our, ah, at our normal streaming time. Uh, and yeah, so I will see you all then. So, as always, I want to thank you all very much for watching. Oh, and I almost forgot. I always forget to do this. Uh, and, aha. So I want to thank you all very much for watching. And as always, I will see you all next time.